Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 193. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. Fire Nation. Let's thank our sponsors for allowing us to keep Entrepreneur on Fire daily and for free. If you want to listen to it, Audible has it. Support Entrepreneur on Fire and go grab your free audiobook and 30-day trial today at audiblepodcast.com slash fire. That's audiblepodcast.com slash fire. With GoToMeeting, it's easy to stay connected from wherever you are, whenever you need to. Try GoToMeeting for free for 30 days by visiting gotomeeting.com, clicking the Try It Free button, and using the promo code FIRE. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Mike Crossan. Mike, are you prepared to ignite? Absolutely. All right. Mike is a proven social entrepreneur, advertising and marketing executive, and thought leader. He is a publisher of socialmediopolis.com and has a proven track record of building and managing revenue centers. I've given Fire Nation a little overview, Mike, but why don't you take a minute, tell us about yourself. We want to get to know you personally, and then share a little bit about your business. Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I've been on the internet since before it was called the internet. Wow. I've actually, I've actually been online since 1978. You must be a military guy. Um, no, <laughs> but I, I actually did work with the University of Massachusetts and the DOD in doing very, very early graphic transfers. I had a small design firm, and uh, that's kind of what got me started in the whole um, computer industry and internet business. Um, I went on to start a very successful uh, ad agency and then uh, published a magazine um, that was sold to Penwell Publishing. It was called Business Computing. Um, then uh, helped Inc. Magazine launch Inc.com. Went to London, worked with uh, Omnicom, which is a huge advertising holding company, um, and worked on Rolls-Royce and set up their first website, which was quite fun. Um, came back, went to work as the VP of sales for MapQuest, um, part of the team that took them public and then uh, was sold to AOL, which was highly unfortunate. Um, <laughs> then, then went on to um, Vivendi and worked with their Flipside.com group and then ended up uh, leaving that and going into consulting for a number of years. And uh, most recently, I founded socialmediopolis.com, which is a private social media marketing community. And I also founded and run the third largest group on LinkedIn, which is called Social Media Marketing. And that has now just over 600,000 members. <laughs> wow. Well, Mike, you are definitely around during the Wild West days of the internet. And I got to say, as a guy in my young 30s and just not having a clue during those years, I'm jealous because those must have been some really interesting and exciting times. Although we're currently living in some very exciting times as well. And a pretty interesting side note, we did just recently interview Eric Schoenberg, who is the editor-in-chief of Inc. Magazine. So that was a great interview we had. So I'm really happy to hear about your affiliation with them. And just really excited to delve more into what you have going on and everything in life and a little more about your history because, man, it just is so interesting and so inspiring to talk to somebody that's been there, done that with so many different companies along the route. But before we do, Mike, we start every show off here with a success quote. It gets that motivational ball rolling, really gets Entrepreneur on Fire listeners pumped up for the rest of the content that you have. So take it away. Well, my favorite quote... Uh, actually comes from uh, a Conan movie, believe it or not. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. And it's, uh, it's a Nietzsche quote that says, that which does not kill you makes you stronger. I love that quote for entrepreneurs, but take it down for yourself, Mike, to the ground level. How do you apply that quote, that mantra to your everyday life? Oh, well, I've been through so many ups and downs that uh, 
you know, when I get into a difficult situation and things are tough and not going the way you want, um, you just realize that you will come out the other end stronger and will apply the lessons. So, uh, for example, my ad agency, which was very successful for a number of years, uh, ended up in bankruptcy. It was the first time I'd ever been through that. And you learn so much more uh, going through a bankruptcy proceeding in a corporate environment than you ever do from your successes. Wow. Well, I hope that's something that we're able to delve into later. And that kind of does touch upon our next topic and is a great segue to it, which is failure, which are challenges and struggles that as entrepreneurs, we face every single day of our life. But I want you to take us back now, Mike, to a time in your journey when you really did have that big, massive failure or that huge challenge that you just really had to dig deep to overcome. And then share with us how you overcame that. Well, uh, probably the failure of the agency is the best example. Uh, at the time I was married, um, the failure of the agency blew up the finances, um, and it it was uh, a plethora of problems at the time, uh, ending in divorce. So I had two young children. I had zero money. Um, I had just gotten a tax return for about, oh, I think it was $4,000. And with that, I bought a car and I moved across country to California um, to, you know, find my place um, in a new position and uh, ended up in the publishing business. So I was selling for a magazine at the time and um, it was really difficult. I'm telling you, it was probably the worst time I think I've ever gone through. But you know, you just buckle up and deal with it. And I went into ad sales, uh, did quite well at it, um, you know, made some money. And uh, it started me on my way back up. Well, let's continue that journey because I do find it fascinating. So you picked up, you moved cross country, must have been very difficult to have been away from your kids to have started again from the ground level when you had just built something that was so successful in the not too distant past. Talk to us about how you did pick yourself up and really start to turn that job that you described into success and how that did catapult you into the future. Well, it's, um, it's kind of funny because I was um, living with a friend in Beverly Hills. Right. But I was driving a 1983 Oldsmobile station wagon. And what year was this? Oh, this was in like 84. Uh, Four eighty six, something like that. Okay, so the car wasn't that old. No, the car wasn't that old. <laughs> but it's a Buick and it's a station wagon. And I'm telling you, uh, driving around Beverly Hills and that, you might as well have been driving around in the Beverly Hillbillies, you know, <laughs> old junk. It was terrible. So uh, first thing I had to do was make enough money to upgrade my car because nobody in Southern California takes you seriously at all unless you have a decent vehicle. So uh, it took me about a year, but I ended up with a Mercedes. And, and believe it or not, that actually did uh, improve everything about my life. And uh, I've been a Mercedes guy ever since. So, um, you know, I just uh, parlayed the job into um, doing some additional consulting and making enough money on the side while I was uh, busy selling advertising you know, to be able to start looking at creating some of my own um, projects and ventures again. And, and several of them didn't work out in the beginning, but, you know, ultimately I ended up back on the East Coast and starting this other uh, magazine. So, Mike, let's use this little success that you did have to transition to the next topic, which is on the other end of the spectrum from failure and challenges and obstacles. And that's the aha moment. And I know with the career that you've had as an entrepreneur, you've had many aha moments on different levels. But take us back to a time when you just had this light bulb that went off and you said, wow, this is going to resonate with my authentic self, with my purpose in life, with my target market and audience. And share with us how you turned that moment into success. I think probably the, the first time that aha moment happened was when um, the IBM company introduced the IBM PC Junior. It was, you know, the very first um, desktop, true desktop computer, um, apart from Apple, of course. And uh, when I 
read that announcement, I went, aha, this is going to change the world. Wow. And uh, so I basically hopped on a plane, went down to Florida, and had a meeting with the uh, general manager of the PC division. Um, his name escapes me right now, but hell a nice guy. Um, and we sat down. I proposed the concept of a magazine dedicated to the IBM uh, desktop market. He bought the concept, committed to a very large ad buy with us, which is what we used to fund starting the magazine itself. And then uh, we created it because my ad agency could do all the graphics. Um, you know, my copywriters uh, did the editorial. I did the ad sales. Um, and we put it together and got distribution um, on newsstands, which is the first time that a computer magazine actually was distributed on national newsstands. And what was the name of that magazine, Mike? It started off being called Reference and then we changed the name of it to Business Computing about uh, six months into it. So at about nine months into it, um, we had lots of advertising, but you know, advertisers pay slowly, like 90 to 120 days, and we were in a huge cash crunch. So um, you know, we did a basic fire sale and ended up selling the publication to um, a company out in the Midwest, and uh, it was very successful. We made a couple million bucks, so that was um, the start of you know taking that and uh, again investing in other activities. So, Mike, what was your major takeaway from that whole experience of having that aha moment, going down, pitching your idea, getting all of those guaranteed ad sales from it, going back, building the business around it, and then having that sale. What's a lesson that you walked away with that you can share with Fire Nation? Be fearless. I mean, I went to the top guy at IBM. I was all of maybe 26 or 7 years old at wow. the time. You know, I just walked in the door. I had a layout in front of me. I believed in the idea. I showed it to him. And I, I showed them how it could not be a failure in the marketplace. It would help them open up, you know, lots of new consumer interest in these products. And uh, that's it. Just be fearless. So, Mike, you've had quite the journey. You've gone through different iterations with different companies. You've seen the ups. You've seen the downs. Have you had an I've made it moment? Yes. And, and it goes back to the whole car thing. I'm a car guy. My, my made it moment was when I took a trip to England and I bought a vintage Rolls Royce and oh. brought it back to the U.S. That's quite an I've made it moment. And it really just kind of goes along with the success that you were having at the time and what you wanted to fulfill that success. And it goes back to that first Mercedes that you bought that in your mind and, and obviously a lot of other minds put you in the place where you could be successful. So I really find it very interesting that this car theme is really cropping up over and over again as this kind of success icon for you. What do you really feel about the overall journey and the different I've made it moments you've made along the way? Talk to us about your achievements, your accomplishments, and how you look at it in the overall big picture. Well, in the overall big picture, what I've done in business isn't nearly as important as what I've done in my personal life which is, you know, try and raise my son properly and, you know, be there for him at the times that he needs me. That's the most important thing of all. Um, but in terms of business, um, the probably the most fundamental, valuable lesson that I've learned is that you need to promote your own self-confidence and you need to be able to walk into a place without any doubt whatsoever in your mind that you're going to succeed at whatever it is that uh, you're trying to accomplish. And I think a good story about that is in uh, New York City, there are these um, newspapers that are uh, free on the street corners. And they're, I think it's called Free University, if I remember correctly. Um, the entrepreneur that started that was going out to get funding and he asked a friend of his for advice. And the friend told him this, and this is, this is back in the early 80s. He said, the first thing you do 
is you go out and you buy a thousand dollar suit. Now today that would be probably about five thousand dollars, a very expensive suit. And this guy said, well, that's crazy. I can't afford it. And this guy said, no, you can't afford not to do it. And I'll tell you why. When you walk into that meeting with the bankers and the venture capitalists, their first thing they're going to look at is your suit. And if your suit is better than their suit, they're much more likely to give you the money. And when I heard that story, I was like, wow, that is so true. <laughs> and so this guy borrowed the money from his friend, bought a thousand dollar suit, walked into that meeting and came out with a commitment for a million bucks, which at that time was a hell of a lot of money. Yeah. Wow. That's fascinating. And just a great mindset for entrepreneurs to have. I've never really liked the word, quote unquote, fake it. But I mean, it does work in this situation when you actually say fake it till you make it. Where as far as so many times in life, perception is reality. And you just want to make sure that people are perceiving you in the way that you want to be perceived. Like, in that story, that gentleman walked in, he wanted to be perceived as a successful and very serious entrepreneur. And because of that, he was perceived that way. That was the reality. And he was able to take his great idea, put a lot of hard work behind it, and turn it into success. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's exactly what it is. You know, it's, it's this uh, old adage about, you know, walking into a bar and the most beautiful woman there is surrounded by friends. And, you know, the guy that will walk away with her is the one who just walks straight up to her and starts talking to her like she's anybody else. And that's exactly what it is. You just have to realize that you have as much, if not more, value as a person in, in what you can accomplish than anybody else in the room. And so you should never have fear of presenting your idea, your concept, you know, asking for what it is that you're looking for, whether it's an introduction, whether, you know, it's money, um, whether, you know, it's taking a new job, whatever it is, it's yours for the taking. All you have to do, present yourself properly and ask for it. So Mike, that is just some great words of wisdom for so many entrepreneurs just to hold on to and to really let sink in to their personality, to the aura of themselves. And let's use that to move forward into your current business. Let's talk about a couple of things that are just really exciting you right now. First of all, uh, social media is becoming ubiquitous, you know, across the planet. And I was fortunate enough to, you know, start my social media marketing group on LinkedIn when it very first opened. In fact, I'm one of the very low four number members. I think they've got they're closing in on 200 million members now. Um, you know, and I was number 1407 in starting on LinkedIn. And as LinkedIn grew and as social media has grown, our group has just exploded. We're, we're now registering about, uh, on an average, about 11 to 1200 new members a day. And uh, every venue in social media is just, you know, taken off like a rocket, not just LinkedIn, but, you know, Facebook and Twitter and Tumblr and, you know, everything you can think of. So we are in the right place at the right time. The, the challenge that we have now is how to turn that into an active community that also generates revenue. And uh, we've been successful in that, um, but we want to be much more successful. And so we're now doing some additional spinoffs from that original group. That's very exciting. And one area of what you do that I really want to bring up and talk about right now, because it's about to impact me, is your public speaking. So by the time this interview airs, this will have been in the past. But as we stand right now, both you and I are getting ready to go to San Diego for Social Media Marketing World 2013, where it's going to be this massive event with incredible social media minds giving incredible talks and presentations and mindsets about social media right now. Talk with Fire Nation a little bit about what you're going to be presenting and what you're really looking to get out of being a speaker at an event like this. I'm looking to try and share some of my experience and knowledge with other people who are like you and I, who are building their own businesses and are looking for 
you know, advice or direction, you know, that can help them. So, Mike, let's talk about your vision for the future. You have a lot of things going on in your business right now. What are some things that you're seeing that are go- that's going to be happening with you in the future? Continuing in the same direction we're doing now, uh, we're spinning out additional properties from Social Mediopolis. So we've started a group for online entrepreneurs called clickventure.com. We've also started a group for newbies, you know, people new to social media called newbiesinsocialmedia.com. And um, we're going to focus on building those properties out for the next couple of years. And then I've started and am positioning a another venture that has nothing to do with social media, but has to do with television. And it's called secondscreenimpact.com, which is all about using uh, second devices, you know, tablets and phones and, and other uh, devices to augment your experience watching television. So a good example of that is my partner in my nonprofit called changetheworld.com uh, is named Vince Gerardis, and he is the executive producer for Game of Thrones, yes. the popular HBO show. And Game of Thrones has uh, set up a website where you can look and get information on the characters, the plot, um, the history, you know, previews of what's coming. You can chat with people um, and, and do all kinds of things on your tablet while you're watching television. This is the next big thing. And it's about, I'd say, three to five years out. So, you know, I'm setting up to take advantage of that wave as soon as it becomes uh, mainstream. Wow, that is some exciting stuff. I'm really looking forward to tracking that progress as well. Okay, Fire Nation, we're going to quickly thank our sponsors who allow us to bring Entrepreneur on Fire to you seven days a week for free. With GoToMeeting, it's easy to stay connected from wherever you are, whenever you need. Meetings are an opportunity to share ideas, problem solve, and develop creative solutions. But if you're like me, your team is spread out in different locations and coming together can be an impossible task. Unless you use GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Just click on a link, turn on your webcam, and you're instantly connected to your team. You can share the same screen to collaborate on documents while seeing each other face-to-face in HD. It's so easy to launch or join a meeting from anywhere using your computer, phone, or tablet, and you can now present from your iPad. When I need to take my virtual assistants through a new system I've developed, I launch a meeting, walk them through the entire process, answering any questions, and they will even have a recording afterwards if they need a refresher. Fire Nation, this is a no-brainer. Try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit GoToMeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code FIRE. Remember, use the promo code FIRE. If you love Entrepreneur on Fire, you will love the 100,000 plus audiobooks Audible has available in its enormous online library. Our guest is about to recommend an amazing book, and you can go grab it for free and get a 30-day trial today by signing up at audiblepodcast.com slash fire. I have been an Audible member for years now, and there are a number of reasons they're the only place to go for audiobooks. Audible provides the best value, the best customer care, and the best selection of titles. Once purchased, you can download your choices and access them on your computer, burn them onto CDs, or upload them to iPods and other MP3 devices. So go grab an audiobook today and support Entrepreneur on Fire by signing up at audiblepodcast.com slash fire. That's audiblepodcast.com slash fire. So Mike, let's move into my favorite part of the show, the lightning rounds. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions and you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? Okay. What is the best business advice you've ever received? The $1,000 suit was, I think, probably the best thing. What's something that's working for you right now? Customer acquisition, which drives everything else in the business. We are really good at that. 
Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? Well, I'd have to say it's 99designs.com. Yeah. You can get yeah. really cheap, you know, very good work done there. So you can set up a website or a concept, test it fast, find out if it's going to work or not. If not, move on without losing a lot of money. Love that. If you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? The Art of War. So Mike, this next question is my favorite. It's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest, and then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to Earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? I would immediately set up a revenue generating website and um, you know, continue to take the revenue from that and invest it in whatever that site is. Mike, you have just given us some great actionable advice this entire interview, and we are all better for it. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, then share how we can find you, and then we'll say goodbye. Don't drink anything green. <laughs> and it was just St. Patty's Day, so that's a perfect advice. Getting a hold of me is easy. It's just M Crossen, C R O S S O N, at changetheworld.com. Or uh, you can call me, 415-717-7600. And um, all I can say is I wish everyone out there who's an entrepreneur the very best uh, of success. And just go for it. Have no fear. Go for it. Mike, I love ending on that note. Thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, and your experience. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. All right. Thank you very much. And now let's give it up for our five-star reviews. Al Maldonado, MaverickMoms.com, Daniel Morales, Briggs Zag, Jeff Connolly, Brooks Patton, The Whoops, Scott Streeter, and NY Adam. Thank you so much for your support of Entrepreneur on Fire, and I look forward to thanking everybody who does the same. Fire Nation. I have an incredible opportunity for a select few of you. I have partnered with entrepreneur on fire sensation Woody Woodward and his publishing company. We are bringing together New York Times bestselling authors, including Tim Ferriss, Seth Godin, Barbara Corcoran, Gary Vaynerchuk, and others, and combining them with entrepreneurs just like you to form a book series titled Conversations with Visionary Entrepreneurs. This is an amazing opportunity to highlight your business and expertise in a way that will give you a competitive edge and position you as an expert in your chosen field. To find out more and to listen to Woody's and my conversation about the book opportunity, go to entrepreneuronfire.com slash author. That's entrepreneuronfire.com slash author. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.